first of all. Hello, Fletcher. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And I just want to say a massive congrats on the release of your EP, The Six Tapes. It's so good. I love every single song of it. First, I want to talk to you about Bitter. We'll talk about the version that's not the remix first. When you were writing the song and everything like that, how did the idea for it come up? Um, so the idea of Bitter came about, um, I actually was going to meet up with a friend, like a really good college friend of mine who like I hadn't seen in a while and we sort of lost touch um, because of like an ex situation. And uh, the day that we wrote Bitter was the first time we've seen each other like in like two years. And um, that, came about and we both had, you know, we both had had everyone in the room, like we all had had some sort of experience with like bitter feelings before. And we just kind of hashed out like old shit and talked it through and um, bitter came about that way. And uh, it was like such, it was a really cool writing process. And the vocal that's on it is just the day of demo vocal. Like I never re-recorded it again. Um, that was just kind of like the, like the take that we got and it was the one that we went with and I feel like there's just there's always something that's really special about that that like you couldn't you can't ever recreate it's like something just has so much um intention like in the moment yeah so that was like a really cool process for me to be a part of one of the lyrics that I love the most is the bit about like you're still in my head but you're not in my bed now and I feel like when you go through a breakup, one of the hardest things is when you're still thinking about that person, but you no longer have, whether it be like the physical side of the relationship. And I just think that, that like you've really nailed that lyric. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's like, I mean, it, I mean, going through a breakup with somebody is just like such a complicated thing. And it's like that feeling of like, they're still in your head for so long and for so much longer than they're like, I, I don't know, they're, and then they're, they're just not in your bed anymore. Um, and that was just, yeah, that was like a really, really ugh, that lyric like still gets me to this day. You know, it's like something that I'm like still like thinking about. Um, so thank you. I appreciate you noticing that little bridge lyric moment. So good. I love it. And you've just released the remix featuring Trevor Daniel, which is amazing. Did you always envisage the song to be made into a remix with another vocal feature? Um, at first it like, it wasn't, I mean, this whole, this whole song better, like, is just very ironic because I didn't even ever plan to put it out. Like a snippet of it was heard. And then people were just like sliding into my DMs being like, bitch, where the fuck's bitter? Like, we want <laughs> We want to hear bitter and I was like oh god like everybody like so many people keep hitting me up about this song and I was like fine I'm just gonna put out this fucking song and I did and then um Trevor actually like slid in did a little dm slide one day and was like yo you're really dope and I was like you're really dope and I was like we should work on something together and then he was like, I really fuck with bitter. And I was like, do you want to try a verse on it? Like, do you want to try writing something on it? He's like, yeah, send it to me. And we did. And like, he went to the studio that day and sent me back something that night. And it just like came about like in a super organic way, just like two people just like respecting each other. And I, I, the reason why I wanted, um, I thought it would be really cool to have a male's perspective on a feeling that's usually reserved for like, females in the sense of being like really vulnerable and bitter and like a, like really sad about a situation and I just I thought it would be really cool to have like a male's take on um on that feeling which is like quite a vulnerable one um so I thought it was really cool to like get his to have like a fresh perspective on such a personal song and it's also awesome because I don't feel like some guys talk about feelings and stuff like that, but I feel a lot of guys don't really talk about feelings and they kind of suppress it. So it's awesome that I guess that whole conversation is being started through the song as well. Yeah, I was just like, I want to hear a dude say like, I'm bitter and like, I still think about you, you know? And like whoever he's singing about, like we're both clearly still bitter about like exes and like have some feelings about shit. And um, I feel like that's important to highlight like everybody's perspective, like regardless of gender, it's, We've all been there. Totally. And the visual is absolutely fire. Talk me through how the visual came to life. Yeah. Um, we actually still, we actually filmed the visual literally like a week and a half ago, like very, very recently. So it came, I was still editing the video like the day that it came out, like hours before it came out, like up until like the last possible second, I was like, tweak, we were like tweaking the coloring and 
and I was doing that. We were editing it. Um, and yeah, the video, the video just came about as like, I wanted it to be an extension of the sex tapes and it to still have this like really voyeuristic, like sexual um, exploration. And it really just is like three different people, like on their, on their sort of journey with it. And um, the thing that I love the most about the set was like the crew was like predominantly female and like super queer. Um, and the lead talent was, um, is non-binary and it just kind of is like an exploration of like three people totally on their own sort of journeys with like identity and like love and loss and, and like acceptance and distraction and sex and being alone. Like, it, and that was something that was like really important for me and for it to, you know, for, for, for that to be like really showcased throughout the video. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. And when you hear a little bit more about like the messaging and some of the people who have worked on it, it really adds to the impact of it. Thank you. Yeah, I think just like representation is, is like so, so important for me. And so to be, you know, on a set with like a female director and DP and, um, you know, like a, a couple, there's a couple trans people on set. And I was I like, I was like, yes, this is like my scene. This, this is how I like to make art um, through the lens of, of people with different perspectives. And the, the collaboration slash remix with Trevor Daniel came around super organically. Is there anyone else at the moment who you're super keen to work with? I mean, I just, I'm like always like, I am such a fan of Halsey, both as a person and an artist. And she's somebody that I've always just like really, really respected. And both of us being from Jersey, I'm like, you gotta get a Jersey girl moment happening at some point in time. I think that'd be, I think that'd be really sick. Um, I love Dua Lipa, like our queen, we stan. Um, uh, Conan Gray, I'm a really big fan of. Um, I'm just, I'm down for, I'm down for the vibes. Like I just, I just like, I want to work with people that like have something to say and have perspective and wear their heart on their sleeves in their like own unique way. Um, so, yeah. I'm also a massive fan of Halsey. So if this Halsey Jersey girls moment happens, like, oh, I don't think <laughs> I could, I don't think I could keep my chill for that. <laughs> well, I know. I, yeah, I don't think I personally could either, but I'd, fi I'd figure it out. It needs to happen. Let's just put it out to the universe, manifest that. The most popular question I got when I put it out to your fans, if anybody had a question to ask, a lot of your Kiwi fans asked if you would be willing to come to New Zealand when it's safe to do so. Oh, were you kidding me? It's like my dr like I'd be honored. It's my dream. I've, it's like dream destination. I want to go so bad. Like, yes, d sign me up. The second the planes are, the second that's happening and it's safe, I am literally there. Cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. Um, Brie would like to know, what was your favorite memory while creating sex tapes, either writing or visually? I think my favorite memory is probably just, is, is definitely making all of the videos. I think like there was just such, that we didn't have any, like I, my ex shot all the visuals for the sex tapes and um, we didn't have any crew. There was no like glam or hair or makeup or set design or uh, anyone. Like we literally like ordered fog machines and light bulbs off Amazon and like pulled shit from like my parents' room and like turned like a living room into a bedroom scene. And um, that like how hands-on this project was that like we literally made it together. And it's, this music is like about our like on and off situation and like what it means to be like a 20 something in love like trying to figure out life and like the messiness of all of it um and just it being like from my hands and like my heart just to some like it didn't get touched this is like the most untouched thing I think I've ever like created um and there's something like so meaningful about that to me and it's so wild, like in any other year, in any other time, it probably wouldn't have happened that way. But it just so happens like that is one of the silver linings of this really shitty year. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. Because like, I think this, this year was supposed to be really different for me. Like, I was planning on going on a, you know, a European headlining tour. And I was supposed to open for Niall Horan and Louis Capaldi on tour. And my debut album was supposed to come out. And so I just had to like pivot in a lot of ways. And 
this music never would have happened. This music, these visuals, I don't know. I don't think anything in my life would have been happening the way that it was, that it is right now if, if this kind of didn't all go down. It just goes to show you that just like, there is a silver lining everywhere, even if you can't see it. Um, and that everything does happen for a reason. Totally. Jenna would like to know what's one song from somebody else that you wish that you had written? God. That's a big question. Okay, this is random. I, I wish I wrote, it's like one of my favorite songs ever, like California King Bed by Rihanna. I don't know why that song just like slays my life. I love that song. The lyrics are, are just so fucking good. Like yeah. that song, it's like my karaoke go-to. I'm like, I don't even know who my, I don't know who my California King is. It's a non-exist, not, non-existent, but like, yeah. somebody can, yeah, I'm, I'm down. Like, I love that song. So good. Um, Shannon would like to know, what's your favorite live show you've ever played? Oh my God. Questions about live shows are so hard because every single city genuinely has such a different feeling. Like every, every group of people I've ever performed, it has such a different energy. And oh, I don't know, like my London show was really crazy. My Amsterdam show was insane. People were like climbing up the walls. Like it was bananas. That's um, good job. Boston is like, Boston parties really hard. My hometown show in Asbury Park, New Jersey was like probably the most memorable show. Like the most meaningful show I've ever played. They all mean so much to me, but like just being in my hometown and playing in a venue that I had played in like, three years prior for 10 people. And it's probably a venue that you'd been to see some of your favorite acts perform at as well. No, it totally was. It, yeah. it was. I, I grew up going there. And so that was like a really cool full circle, like crazy moment for me. That's so dope. And I think this might be like some kind of personal joke. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but Joe asked, can you give an update on your 40 tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I am like, I, um, got uh, a little like beach to spend some time like by myself for a couple weeks because I'm on this whole like self-love like self-exploration like attempting to be on this like journey and like trying to be my own best friend and it's fucking really hard and it's I'm uh, trying to adult and like not really succeeding but I went to the grocery store and I like panic bought like so many fruits and vegetables that I just like don't know what to do with like I literally bought like 40 fucking tomatoes and there's just <laughs> like for one person it was just way too many I've already, there was like fruit flies all over my shit. Like it's not, we're not, we're not killing it, but we're trying and we're learning. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to having you in New Zealand, hopefully sometime in the not too distant future. Oh, thank you so much. I'm stoked to come see you guys soon. And I, I like your t-shirt. Tell your roommate I said hi. And you also have a beautiful smile. So keep oh, smiling. Oh, you're too kind. I'll be smiling for the rest of the day now. <laughs> It's cute. Okay, cool. I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. I love to taste in your mouth, you taste me now, I'm